Hello, people. I'm Lee Cole Three, and I'm here with my partner, James Proctor. James, how are you doing today? Hey, doing really well, Lee. How are you today? Well, I'm doing good. And we're going to discuss a couple things. A uh, rebranding is one, and we're going to talk about the difference between Mikey Scars and when it comes to branding and Sammy Gravano, because it's the perfect example of not what to do with a brand when it's right. worked, when it's working. Mm -hmm. but before we do that, uh, people, uh, Angel Gotti and I have started a uh, Patreon page. If you go to Patreon and put in Angel Gotti, this page will pop up. Underneath here, I'm going to have the link to uh, go go to the show. But just so you do know, this would pop up, and this is uh, our page. We've already got a couple things up. We're going to be doing some lives on it and stuff. Uh, we're going in totally, a totally different direction with the Patreon. We're still going to be here on YouTube, but we're going to offer Patreon also. And uh, we're going to be able to put up interviews of people that would never come on YouTube because of the trolls and the viciousness of it. Uh, as you know, Angel Gotti knows a lot of people, uh, a lot of famous people. Uh, she could pick up the phone call and ask any of them to come on, and they would. Uh, but she's not going to do that to bring them onto YouTube and be abused by low lives like uh, Tony Pizza, uh, people like that, just the bottom of the barrel garbage. But anyway, let's go on from there. So this is the page right here. Uh, so if you go to Angel Gotti, go to Patreon, put Angel Gotti in. And the name of the show is Angel Gotti, my father's daughter, and she's with Marla. On top, you'll see Angel Gotti, my father's daughter, with Lee Cole and James Proctor. This is a business that we have together, my, myself, James, and Angel. Uh, and the first three days it's been open, we've been doing very well. A lot of women have joined. I am shocked. James, are you shocked about the amount of women that have joined this page? Yeah, I, I am. I, you know, I know that that Angel obviously has a pretty uh, big reach of women subscribers on YouTube. It's 20 percent, 25 percent, which is very high because, you know, just look at us. We have 5 percent women and and that's pretty much the average in the mob genre. So, uh, you know, I'm just really happy that uh, there'll be. Uh, we have the number of women subscribers and Angel's doing a lot for the women community in that. There's going to be yeah. a lot of women only type uh, shows. And so I'm just excited about it. And also, you know, like you said, all the celebrities, family members, other people that will come on the Patreon that will not come on YouTube. So I'm just I just know it's going to be a success and it's going to be. A lot of fun and i know angel is very excited about this and you know we're we're enjoying uh this journey together and the first hour we had to show up uh, we talked about it on an angel show we got the first 12 people that came on in that first hour 10 of them were women yeah and when i looked at that i was shocked because i seen women's names that i, I didn't even recognize that weren't on her show so that means women are listening but they're not going in the chat room because People yeah. don't like to go in chat rooms if they're going to have people say rude things to them. Okay, so anyway, if you go there, uh, you could join $9.99 a month, and you get early access, a live chat, fan request, uh, live Q&As, exclusive content. We've already put up some exclusive content. Exclusive voting power, where you get to vote on shows and who you like to see. And we're going to get into the merch, not right away, but we are working on the merch right now. And uh, this is called – this is a – Angel's Boulevard, basically. But see right here, uh, Angel did a uh, inter she interviewed Moz from MMA Holes, one of the top shows on uh, about the MMA. He and and Moz brought on his wife. She, her and Marla put a woman's feel into that interview, didn't they, James? Yeah, that was a that was an awesome interview. One of the best interviews that I've I've seen. And I'll tell you something about Angel. She's great at interviewing people and, and she has a lot of experience at it. And so, you know, it's going to be some really cool, entertaining content that we'll be able to put out there. And so this MMA host interview, there's some that just it's just amazing. Some the phenomenal interview. That, yeah. And that guy has a huge channel. His channel is growing huge. Uh, and and we've developed a friendship, myself, Angel, Maz, his wife. It's like we've developed a friendship uh, just by uh, – I've known him for several years, but not personally. I, I went to his show, which was very successful, but now we know each other. We're getting to the personal level. Uh, and 
this is up, and um, we're not going to block this. This is the St. Valentine's Massacre. James, you made that a 10-minute documentary that you made from scratch, right? Yeah, it is. It's, so it's, uh, it's a, we call them mini docs, and so they're 10 to 12 minutes long, and they're, they're um, professionally done. Um, you know, the, everything from, from the voice, you know, it's me doing the voice, but it's, um, you know, scripted. We, we have, you know, the, you know, video and, you know, just what you'd see in a documentary on, um, you know, any of the channels. And just once again, people, it's Angel Gotti, my father's daughter with Marla Edgar. Marla is with her on her YouTube channel. They work great together. Uh, Jerry, the art guy, this guy, look at that beautiful uh, drawing that he did up there. Uh, his art is top of the line. And uh, Angel's going to be doing home photos. She's also going to do uh, um, uh, home uh, videos of the mm -hmm. goddess that you do never have you people have never seen these videos so we got a lot of things planned here and uh and james and i will carry the mob mob side of this and do our stories okay yep. and with that we're going to go there and next we are going to we're going to pull up another thing too people we're going to talk about sammy gravano and people are going to go oh there they go talking about sammy again yes we're going to talk about sammy again because he's the gift that keeps on giving Okay. Okay. So explain this to me. Uh, this was a very, when Sammy Gravano first came on here, this was a very popular series, wasn't it? Yeah. Our thing was very popular. It came out during COVID and <clears throat> it was amazing. You know, I thought it was well done. James Carroll was the producer of it, director yes. of it. Very, very good. And it caused Sammy to get up to about, you know, 500,000 um, subscribers within a year or so. And, he's still, and, and he, he's still getting a lot of views off of that series. But yep. Sammy has recently talked about rebranding a, a series. And people, I want to put up two things. Okay, first of all, James, you are in the business. You know what a brand is. Is that right? Explain yeah, exactly. to people what a brand is. Yeah, so a brand is just, uh, you know, let's take, Sammy Gravano, you could take um, Angel Gotti, you take anyone. So it's it's basically who you are. It, it's either your product or service. It could be you yourself, you know, like Sammy Gravano. It's the brand is really revolves around him and his stories. And so that's the brand. And so the way you communicate that brand, you know, is through various sources. So YouTube is his main way, but you also have web pages. You've got Instagram, you've got Facebook, you've got all the different social media platforms. And it's just a way to be able to get your uh, your story out there. So when we say brand, it's it's your product. It's it's what Sammy's providing or anybody that has a channel or show. You should be looking at your brand as a whole, not just uh, see it as a channel. And every brand needs something different to offer people. See, the, the disadvantage we're at is we're not informants. Uh, we're not uh, gangsters. Gangsters aren't going to come on here that have not uh, informed. Uh, and it's like Mikey Scar says, we lost our gang gangsters card when we informed. Yeah. So they have to come on here and, and what's going to be best for them? And if you look at a lot of these guys, the, would you say the mistake that these uh, informants make is they come on here attacking the people that they put in prison and maybe they shouldn't do that? Because Mikey Scars has actually showed that if you do not attack the person that you put in prison, you're more respect. Yeah, and it, it's more credible as well because, you know, one, he doesn't make excuses for what he did. Two, he's able to uh, be factual with the information he's provided, you know, a lot of these informants come on and, and they want to embellish their story or downright lie. And so, you know, that lo you lose credibility when you do that. And so, you know, that's where you see something different with uh, Sam. I mean, with Mike, Mikey scars versus uh, Sammy. And, and, and you're going to Mikey scars. He did not brand toward YouTube. So you're not going to, you're going to go to social blade. You're not going to see, booming numbers he branded his show toward patreon is that correct yeah and that is and the reason for it is that um you know i've i've spoken with rj about this before and so they want to provide the story right but they don't 
want to go through the nonsense of, you know, people, you know, trolls or different people just going into the comments and just creating, um, you know, a lot of chaos that distorts from the story. They want to do a scripted story. They have a life of a life of this brand. They they're not going to do this forever. They're they're going to do their story. And when they're done, uh, that's it. But they have a vision. They have a objectives. They have a mission statement. So, you know, they're doing it as a business. They're doing it as a brand should be. And OK, so we know that the most successful uh, in, the, in this genre, the most successful uh, person in this genre by far. And we proved this with the stats is John Gotti. The man's been dead for 20 years. And by far, we proved that 20 to 30 times as many uh, searches are done for his name over all the informants combined together. Are we correct about that? Yeah, that, that's correct. And we're talking about someone that passed away um, over 20 years ago. Now, Sammy's built his show attacking John Gotti. But when he first started the R thing stuff, he used certain videos to attack John Gotti. Now it's like every show, it's attacking John Gotti. And do you think this is starting to backfire on him? Yeah, it, it's starting to backfire on him. Also, uh, you know, the, the stories are getting stale. He doesn't uh, have um, a lot uh, that he's able to offer. He's trying to go in a lot of different directions. He's, he's like throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what will stick. So he's, he's getting out of his lane is what it is. So he's got the bullpen where he's trying to do this, uh, what he calls a mafia newscast. And so uh, I think the biggest problem I see with him is that he still thinks he's in the mob. He still acts as he's a gangster. And and, you know, he's just and now uh, people like Mikey Scars are coming out and showing proof that the that he has not been honest with his viewers. And so it's starting to backfire on him. And then, you know, what brought him the notoriety in YouTube was our thing with James Carroll. It was wonderfully done, as we've said before, and it was his story. And so now Sammy's saying, hey, I'm going to redo this. We're doing a remake of, of our thing because I'm not happy with some of the contents of how it turned out. And I don't know how you can improve on it. But the problem, in my opinion, is it's it's the issues that Sammy has with James Carroll personally. And, and yeah, and it's greed, too. It's great. Sammy wants a lot of money. Yeah. And we're going to show some stats that proves that his show is floundering. It's not picking any, any subs. It's kind of just sitting there now. It's it's done its growth. Yeah. Uh, but Sammy kind of reminds me of uh, this. Do you remember when Coca-Cola was successful? Then they came out with a new recipe. Yeah, I remember that. I think it's in 84, 85, something yeah. like that. It took them. It, yeah, it, it took them. They have never really recovered from it. And at that time, they were number one. Mm -hmm. You know, and and the only reason they're number one now is because of their syrup sales into restaurants. Uh, in in stores, they're not they're no longer number one. Right. Then the you got another yeah. And and we're just doing table talk pie. Uh, I'm sorry, table talk pie. Great, remember this? I do. One of the best pies. They come in the little boxes, and there was everybody knew that table talk came in this. And then yep. what does table talk do? They kind of put it in a an ugly uh, brown uh, cardboard type of uh, thing, their sales plummeted. And yeah. that's branding people. That's what, if you, you know, that there's an old saying, if it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix it. Yeah. And, and, that, yeah. and that's the problem. And I'm, we're going to show you some of Sammy's stats. Okay. So Sammy's on the bottom there, right? No, that's both Sammy. So the first one is the number of monthly gained video views and then the second one at the bottom is the number of gained subscribers um and so it's looking at a month-to-month -month basis and so what you're showing there is it, you just look at it uh, so this goes back uh two years and so where you're seeing sammy's growth was in 2021 so that was when and he 20, was coming out yeah and, and some of 2022. 2022 right but but come 23, he's hit the wall. He's he's flat there. He's not that one on the bottom is uh, is subs gained. He got to a half a million. 
And a lot of that was based off that meetup that he did. He picked up like a hundred thousand with the meetup with uh, Michael Francis. Yes, he and, did. And uh, he's just uh, floundering there for seven months now. Yeah, it it really has. Every month, it's been less and less subscribers gained and less and less gain video views. And and on the top with the views, they're right there. You know, you're looking, and this is when the brand changing started. Uh, when he started changing his brand, he had the falling out with Carol. Uh, and uh, now he's trying to fix our thing, which is like a library of, uh, of stuff. A lot of it is uh, him not get, putting out the right facts, but right. it's still a library and it's a successful library. And he's talking about rebranding it, changing them and stuff. See, what Sammy's doing right now is he knows they're telling Sammy if these people are are smart they're telling him they're saying look you know uh, uh this ain't working sammy we got to fix it uh but the problem is he has young girls telling him this yeah he's young not going to listen to people you know he just won't do it and you're right young girls and carol carol did series like uh um the killer and uh, one of the killers in uh california one of the serial killers very popular series i can't think of it right now but he, he did a lot of series like that. So he knew about that type of lifestyle. He did. And now he has these young kids, and he'll mention Roy DeMeo, and they'll go, who's that, Sammy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if you've got people that don't know who Roy DeMeo is, they shouldn't really be there with you. Do uh, you think that's an accurate statement? Yeah, I mean, um, that's a lot of it. And, and also, you don't have anyone that's willing to push back on – on Sammy, you know, th these people are awe inspired by Sammy. They, they just, you know, really do a lot of hero worship. And so James Carroll wasn't that way. You know, he's a, a consummate professional and he wasn't going to let Sammy, um, you know, he'd give him advice and everything. And, and Sammy didn't like it. And, and, you know, now you have a, he just recently took a picture and he has his production crew around him and the production crew is like, big enough to like make a movie. Uh, and then you got a guy like say Mikey Scars, his production crew is RJ Roger. Uh, you know, uh, and, and when you look at these people and they're trying to grow their shows, you need people around you to help you. There's no doubt about that. Would you say that's fair, James? Cause we know the amount of work we do here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we have a couple of people that work with us. And so, yeah, I mean, you, if you're going to do a, a show, right, you, you have to do that. I mean, you have the front end piece, which is just uh, the execution of doing a show. And that's just, just a small part of it. You've got the post-production, the pre-production, the research, all of that stuff that you have to do. And it's and and that doesn't even include the marketing. You know, you have to do a, a marketing of any brand. And it's um, not easy to do that. And it's very involved. Well, you know, when we started, when Angel and I started the Patreon page, we decided that along with you james but to be fair you're going back to work and uh you're helping us at night time right now you're on lunch mm -hmm. and i got to give you a lot of credit because people don't realize that you have a pretty good life that you have to uphold by working and then you come here luckily i'm retired so i've kind of made this my job mm -hmm. but i didn't yeah. realize i'd be working 60 days a week i'll sit down here seven o'clock in the morning and it's non-stop yeah, I mean and, it's 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 long hours to do it right, and people don't realize it's it's a lot of hours. And 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 when you get into this, and a guy like RJ or uh, even these other shows, and I'm not going to name them because I really don't feel like naming them. But the, uh, but these other shows too is uh, there's a lot of production done behind them. You know, it's not like you pick up a camera and open it up and start insulting people. Right. You know. You're trying to put together a show like this. We're just talking about Sammy Gravano's show is going down. He's plateau mm -hmm. You know, he's he's pretty much plateaued. Yeah. And uh, and when a guy like that, Sammy has based his life on greed. Did you pretty much yeah. say that's accurate? Yeah. I mean, you just look at his career. Look at uh, and that was what he was known at on the street. And so uh, people we're afraid to do business with him. We know what he did to his friends and family members. And so yeah, greed was always it. He was never about Cosa Nostra. It was all about himself and, and how he could, uh, you know, become bigger.
And I'm going to put this up so you can see this a little bit better, people. Okay, so we're going to get here. If you look at this right here, you see where subscribers are? He's been on 500. There's none gain here. You see this right here? None gained at all. Right. And that happens sometimes. Sometimes, you know, we'll go through areas where we don't pick up any for a week, and then all of a sudden we'll pick up 100. You're right. Uh, and that just happens. And if you look at his numbers over here, same thing. He's at 99 million views. But the majority of those views, would you say they were picked up from the R Thing series? Including yeah, yeah. even to this day, he's pull, he, he, the majority of that comes from that series. Yeah, exactly. A lot of those, he had, uh, you know, million plus uh, views on some of those videos. And now, you know, he's having videos with, you know, 5,000 or so views. And, and they're his lives. And so, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, we will even gain more than that sometimes. So it's just, you know, it's just kind of uh, lost the his direction. And September 22nd of 22 is when he ran into his little issue. He had a little peak right before that, but he hasn't really had any peak since then. If you look at it's dragged all the way up to July. Yeah. So you're talking from uh, from September of uh, of 22 until now. Yeah. We're, September is going to be a year. That's t that's only two months away. So we got literally a year where his show has totally bottomed out. Yeah, exactly. And so and that was when he, he stopped doing a lot of the content. Uh, that spike was his last uh, our thing season. And and so, yeah, I mean, that's just what's happening. And, you know, uh, and we're, we're discussing this because uh, people we, we when we come in here, everybody has to rebrand or tweak their brand. It's, it's always going to happen. We've had to do it. I've had to do it. I've had a guest host that I branded around that uh, turned out um, really, uh, he didn't hurt the show because I still get a lot of views off of him. Uh, yeah. A lot of people still watch him. Okay. But, you know, how is, uh, now let's get to Michael Francis. How's his brain brand been looking? Yeah. And so he's one that's actually uh, a little bit different. So he, he's actually done a couple of things that Sammy can't and that most of the channels can't do. So he, he, he's expanded past the mob genre. He's into general entertainment and, and he's also done the ability to bring in women. And that's something that, uh, you know, if you look at Angel Gotti, for example, the, what we're doing at the Patreon channel, uh, that she has that ability to kind of be in that direction of like a, Michael Prince C. So, you know, I'm not saying we'll get a million people on there, but what I'm trying to say is that uh, she can expand past the mob genre into general entertainment and into uh, women uh, supporters and, and subscribers. If you take the Angel Gotti brand, and Angel knows she has to work on her brand at times, and uh, mm -hmm. but she's had Marla up there. They've been together for like me and you. You yeah. get together and you build up a trust with a certain amount of people. Then other pe then at times you're just going to be disliked. Mm -hmm. And in this genre, there's no in between. Every one of us, everybody that has a show, you know, it's like America split right down the middle. You'll have uh, a, a certain amount of people that can't stand you, and then you have uh, a certain amount of people that that like you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's just the way it is. It's it's, it's all our show. Is. Mm -hmm. And Sammy doesn't. Sammy doesn't seem to remember that this was his his brand, uh, and, and and he's still being greedy. But Sammy, this was your brand right there. That yeah. was your brand. Mm -hmm. You were branded a rat, and now yeah. you're you're not happy with our thing, and you want to change. And and I don't know, Sammy, if anybody listen. We're not connected to Sammy in any way, so. Maybe they sat down and just showed what we showed. We showed that your show is play, it, it has uh, been dragging. Now, if you had a business, James, and you do have a business, you're, you're in the business area, mm -hmm. and you were talking to somebody about their brand, and you've seen Sammy's brand, what would you say to him? Well, you know, you look at it as, as a life cycle. Brands, you know, you start off, you go big, then you, you get to a point where you're, it's called normalizing where you're you're at the same, you know, you're basically at your plateau. But now what you're seeing is the decline. Every brand goes through that. 
And so that's that's a critical step in the life cycle. Are you going to be able to recover from that or are you going to continue to lose out? And so, you know, we've seen it with with other things, you know, like with, um, you know, you see Amazon, they've been able to recover and continue. You see Google, they continue to do it. But then you see other uh, companies, you know, like, um, you know, Sun Microsystems, they weren't able to do it. And so it happens with, you know, with Fortune 500 companies just as well. And everybody has to change their brand at one time. I mean, if you go back and look at Apple's original brand, it was this ugly little Apple. And now they got it to this shiny, smooth, uh, futuristic. They Apple. almost went out of business. They, yes, they, they, they did. They, they almost went out. And that was because they they were trying to do so many different things. And then they they went back they retrenched they i think they filed bankruptcy and then they brought steve jobs back and they said well we're going to do this iphone you know they had the ipod iphone and finally what happened was they became the first trillion dollar company yes and and people you know if you want to have an adventurous trip go back and pull up uh, a branding over here uh business brands and, and like companies like IBM, these big companies, and look at their brand, like Shell, Shell gas station. Uh, they used to have this ugly little black and white shell. That's when they first came out. But you grow with time, and yeah. these companies grow with time. And if you want to be successful in here, uh, you gonna have to adjust your brands each time. I made mistakes in here, so I adjust my brand. My, I'll give you an example. Adjusting my brand now is bringing it on you, James. Would you say that's an adjustment to my brand? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's we have a different direction maybe than where you were before with your other host, co-host on how you approach and, shows. Yeah, and you, and you and you do different things. So listen, we just wanted to talk about brands, people. It's something different, but it's something that means a lot when you got a YouTube channel. Uh, or if you have a Patreon page, or if you're going from YouTube into Patreon, I just witnessed uh, somebody uh, attempt to go into Patreon and they failed big time. Uh, just because you think you can do it doesn't mean you can do it, does it? Yeah, and that, that, it's tough because you have to have a differentiator because uh, you can't just you know, go into Patreon and say, well, I'm just going to do the same videos that I did on YouTube because people can get that for free or, you know, they, you know, they have the commercials or whatever, but you've got to be able to do things differently. You have to, people have so many choices for, you know, where they can get entertainment. And so people may not think 10 bucks is a lot, but it is for, for a lot of people. So you, you have to provide value regardless of it. People aren't just going to give you money just because they like you. Yes, you said it perfectly. And, you know, what we did and, what you know, what we did is we branded. Uh, I'm sorry, you can still hear me, right? Yes. OK, so what we did is we rebranded. Well, we went into Patreon and realized that we wanted to be really successful and, and have the opportunity to build our show. Angel Gotti gave us the opportunity to build around the Gotti name, the most successful name in the mob. Plain and right. simple. So yeah. we have a great opportunity, but we're going to have to still build it. Is that, would you say that's pretty much how it works? Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll still have to, we'll just still have to build it. Uh, you know, we need people to uh, see value, entertainment, you know, from it. And so, uh, but, you know, with everything that's uh, between us and Angel and, you know, we got some great people that's on board, Jerry as well. I mean, everything's very professional. And so, and I think that that's what people will see and, and, you know, going to have some cool, cool, cool content. So I'm just really, and we're, doing it on a shoe, and we're doing it on a shoestring budget. We don't have the opportunity like Michael Francis, Sammy Gravano, you start off, you have a production team come in. Uh, you even look at, um, uh, Mikey Scars, he he was lucky because he hooked up with the right person. And Mikey Scars didn't really come in it for the money. That's the feeling no. I get. No, he so, didn't. So he had the perfect person to work with him. And uh, there's other people that are trying to find that perfect person to work with. If people think this is a one-person thing, not on real shows, people. 
Right. You're not going to do well in here with on, on, on a real show, just coming on and flicking on the camera and putting down product. It's very difficult, James. Yeah. This is yeah, entertainment. It is. Isn't it? Yeah, this it is. is. I mean, are. even Moz, you know, Moz, uh, he, he's got uh, Greenberg. From, I'm sorry? Moz from? Oh, we're talking about um, MMA Holes. Okay, so, thank you. Yep. So MMA Holes, great great channel and and but even him he he's entertainment and he could he could carry in interview he could talk for four or five hours but he has like greenberg that will be on on his shows with him doing stuff he has his wife he has other people and you know it, he has it's bumper very, from the oh. ufc he has uh he's brought on uh weedman uh chris weidman yeah. and uh yeah uh, ufc fighters and he built his brand because he started with nothing and then uh, when these UFC people seen him, they were like, wow, we like what you're doing. We'll come on your show. Yeah. And that's what yeah. we're attempting to do. Yeah. And he hustles too. He, you know, he'd go to the events. He would uh, just try to stick a microphone in their face, you know, and, and he became respected. A lot of people want to, uh, they want to talk to him now. And so it, it's just really amazing. And what he's, what, when he came into it, he was the first, he's really the only one doing this. Now you have a hundred other people just like this genre in the mob drive when you when you came into it it's just a you know a couple other yeah, channels when i came into the way it was uh jeff canarsi um jeff canarsi um at that time um it was uh gene barillo it was a john and gene show uh mre me and fps and not many other people you know a right. couple people here and there and we're still here kicking away, but it hasn't been easy. It's not easy, people, especially yeah. if you're not willing to rebrand and do stuff different. Right, James? Yeah, exactly. You have to do that. Okay. Well, and also, uh, we just want to announce that Gene Barillo has actually been given uh, a date to act when he's actually going to get out because there was the dates were all over the place. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it's September 20th. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that is. So, you know, actually went to Bureau of Prisons. We see that he's in, in NBC Brooklyn. Um, and so he is got a release date of 9-20-2023. You know, some we were thinking it would be in in August, but for, you know, the way they calculated everything ends up being September 20th. And we also got uh, Convict Inc., uh, he's back to doing his show. He's put three in, three together now in a couple of days. Let's mm -hmm. wish him the best and hope he under uh, overcomes his demons in his life that yes. he talks about. And mm -hmm. um, then we got Kane Shea who, who have a, had a heart attack and he's mm -hmm. kind of staying away, but he said he'll be back. Okay. And we wish them the best. And these yeah. guys are all guys once again trying to develop a brand. Mm -hmm. So you know, uh, and we hope that this is interesting to people. We find it interesting. You know, yeah, I, I when I yeah, when I came on here, I turned on the camera. I didn't really, I would turn on the camera and and fight with people. Mm -hmm. That's that's not successful in the end. It's like being in a glass house. You got to build yeah. a foundation around your show. And yeah, and we, that's what you have to. Foundation. Right, and then the the stress. You know, you know, do you want do you want to have the stress of having to fight with people all the time? Deal with that nonsense it, it, it you know stress is the biggest cause of death to be honest it really is so you know you have to it, you have to be watch your health and all that and so you know i think it's better to have a plan in place uh, you know do things like that i know many times it's easy just to you know you get angry you want to come on and you know attack i know i feel that way at times but i know that What's the point in doing that? Uh, you know, I, why do I want to harm our brand, what we have, you know, so. And we're going to close the show out by saying, if you have not uh, subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you have not, please like this video. We hope that you do like it. And please uh, go to Angel Gotti, my father's daughter. And that's the name of the show with Lee Colin, James Proctor and Marla Edgars. And uh, please give the uh, opportunity to sign up there. And uh, it's like I said, you're going to see things on this show that we will never see on YouTube, especially with the uh, type of people we're bringing in the interview. We have some really good interviews lined up. And I just like to mention that. And uh, that's that right there, people, it's called selling a brand. Yes, it is. Okay. Well, James, uh, would you like to anything you'd like to say before we take off? No, 
No, no, I just, you know, this is, you know, for me being in business, this is kind of fun to have this conversation. I hope that people, uh, you know, find it uh, interesting. I mean, it's a little yeah. bit different. But, I said to you, you I know, said to you, James, reality. we're going to talk about brands today. And James started jumping up and down and mm -hmm. he did three, three flips off his couch. He says, brands, we're going to talk about business. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm here. I'm there. I'm there. Okay. Yeah. So, Sammy, remember, Sammy, don't be new Coke. Be old Coke. <laughs> okay, with that, we're closing out. Yeah. Take care, people. Have a nice one. Take care. Have a good one.